what we're going to do now is determine the electric potential and the electric field on the axis right here of a uniform circular disk of radius capital R given that it's got uniform surface charge density sigma all over its surface and we want to find this a distance x away from the center right there at point P. Well uh, this is going to be actually a lot easier now that we can play with electric potential. Uh, figuring out the potential is not too bad and then figuring out the field is way easier. So the first thing we've got to do is rely on what we found last time. We found that the V due to a ring of charge Q and radius A at that similar distance X away is this. So we're going to use that fact accepting the fact that instead of our ring we're going to have to make an infinite number of rings and instead of charge Q each ring will have charge dq. So what we're going to do is first find the electric potential due to our ring dq. And that's going to be the same thing as we have over here. It'll just be k dq over the square root of, now we've got to be careful here, uh, x is the same thing, x squared, but this time instead of an, a radius a, we have a radius R right there and that's going to be uh, one of the variables of integration for us because that's going to change. This is just one ring of dq and we're going to have to integrate over all the rings inside and out of this to make a complete disk. So this will be x squared plus r squared which is the radius of our ring of charge dq. So we want to integrate that over this entire disk. But first, we need to find an expression for dq. dq, the charge of this infinitesimally thin ring, is what? Well, it's going to be sigma, the surface charge density, times dA. The, this is the area of this ring. Now, how can we express the area of this infinitesimally thin ring. Well, you might think pi r squared outer minus pi r squared inner. That's just wrong. This has the same inner radius as outer radius. It's an infinitesimal wide. So here's how we do this. Here's how you figure this out. If we just cut this right there, cut the ring right there, and I'm going to spread it out like this, then you can see this. This has got the height right there is dr. It's an infinitesimal height. And the width of this thing this way is just 2 pi r. So our area, the area of this whole region right there, this infinitesimally thin ring, the dA is equal to 2 pi r dr. Thus, our dQ we can express as sigma times dA, which is sigma times 2 pi r dr. So this is going to be very useful for us. Now we're going to have to integrate all infinity of these little rings of charge dq. We've got to add an infinite number of those. So what we're going to do is integrate over the entire disk all the different dqs. And all the, in other words, we're going to integrate k dq over square root of x squared plus r squared for, in other words, entire disk just means for all the r's. All the different radii from right here to right there to right there all the way out to big R. That's all we've got to do. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to uh, rewrite my integral so we have a good form of it and I'm in fact going to uh, start with this, the integral from r equals 0 to r equals big R, the outer radius of the disk, of k dq. Instead of dq, I'm going to go ahead and put in this, k sigma 2 pi r dr over square root of x squared plus r squared. And I'm going to rewrite this one more time, taking out all of the constants that I don't need. So that'll be k or 2 times k times sigma times pi. Those are all the constants and all that I have left in here is 
r, and I'm going to also use uh, this form of the 1 over x squared plus r squared, x squared plus r squared, uh, the square root of that to the, to the negative 1 half, I just rewrote it like that, uh, times r times, whoops, times dr rather. So this is just a rewriting of what we have to integrate from r equals 0 to r equals r. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, uh, to me, this looks like uh, it might be something pretty easy, and it turns out that it is. And you may have your own method of doing this. What I like to do is just try a hypothesis and see if that works. I'm going to try to see if this works. Uh, if it's just x squared plus r squared to the 1 half. Let's just try that out. In other words, we'll take the derivative of that and see if it in fact turns out to give us what's inside here, right there. If it does, then we've guessed the right integral. So let's see what, if I take the derivative of this with respect to r, let's go ahead and try that, d dr of that is equal to, uh, just multiply that by 1 half, 1 half times x squared plus r squared, and then I would subtract 1 from that to the negative 1 half. But then I would have to find the derivative of this due to the chain rule right there. So that would be times 2r. And that would cancel that and that. And hey, sure enough, this is exactly what I have right there. So I guessed the right integral. And now all i got to do is evaluate it. 2k sigma pi... And what I found is my integral is x squared plus r squared to the negative one-half, or sorry, to the one-half. And i got to evaluate that from r equals 0 to r equals r. And when I do that, I get 2k sigma pi times final will be x squared plus big R squared to the 1 half, and then minus, that'll just be minus x squared because the uh, this R will be 0, so just minus x squared to the 1 half. And of course, that just gives us x. So when we're all done, this integral, in other words, the potential here, v equals 2k sigma pi x squared plus r squared to the one-half minus x. There it is right there. Now, that actually is going to make it really, really easy for us to find the field. Because we know the field goes in the x direction by symmetry, Let's go ahead and find the field. The electric field in the x direction, that's the only one there will be, is just negative of round v round x. This is a partial derivative. Those are not twos. Those are rounded d's. It's the partial derivative. So let's go ahead and take the partial derivative of that. Uh, this is just a constant, 2k sigma pi. And then with respect to x, Hey, partial derivative, we do have an x there. So that'll be uh, 1 half times x squared plus r squared. r is a constant here. To the negative 1 half minus the derivative of that is just 1. Uh, whoops, I got to do my correction factor right there. That'll be times 2x. And then I do minus 1 right there. So let's see what I finally get. This is equal to, looks like this 1 half will cancel that thing. So what we finally get is 2k sigma pi times, this will be x, over the square root of x squared plus r squared. That's just from that. Minus 1 but it's the negative of that. I can't forget my negative. And sure enough, that is it. This is the final result for our electric field that we got last chapter, but it was a lot tougher because we didn't have electric potentials to help us.